Hey guys, so today we're going to do a little bit of something different, we haven't really done this before, I'm just going to do a little talk about um, how you can adjust things slightly if you're having issues. Now I get a lot of people, and I know trainers do, and, and people really struggle with tightness sometimes in areas, so they can't perform certain movements, or certain movements are really tough at points. Now the leg press in particular, when uh, you see people using it, a lot of people can't get a very good range of motion. You do get the other extreme of someone like Dorian Yates, where you know you could go down and you could rotate back, which is phenomenal if you can do that, but most people's backs will go. And that's not me um, having a go at Dorian, obviously, but he's just incredibly lucky that he has that, you know, his back can take that. A bit like Tom Platts, when he came to my gym and he said he could go down um, without much resistance and almost not bounce out of the bottom because that would be incorrect but shoot straight back up and he never had knee pain in his entire life you know you, you, you're pretty lucky if you can do that so um, I just wanted to talk with the leg press but you can obviously do this you can do this on squats um, or anything like that for legs so as I've said before don't fall into the trap of what people say where your toes should be turned in turned out straight forward have them what's comfortable for you because otherwise, whatever anyone says, you're turning the joint to do that, that's never a good place to be. When people say, well, you're strengthening it, no, you're not. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pop it. So have your feet where they're comfortable, but when you come down, a lot of people on squats, like where they feel quite a lot of tightness in the hips. Now, I'm not saying this will work for you, but it can certainly help. A lot of the time in the hips, almost like the ball joint type bit, that it tightens up when you're getting near the bottom. So what you can do is, is if, if I like to press, uh, I, I'm not too bad, but if I, if I like to press, my feet are slightly turned out naturally. What you actually want to do beyond that point is then actually turn the leg out slightly that way. Now, that's not me contradicting myself, saying you, you're adjusting something because you're not actually doing anything wrong there. Your feet are where they should be naturally and you're just actually turning the leg out slightly. What that does is it releases some tightness in the hips and you'll find that when you come down, you can go that little bit further or you can get down there with no discomfort. Um, so it's a technique that you definitely want to try. Um, obviously, like I say on the leg press, for 99.9% .9 of the people, focus on keeping, I don't want you to focus so hard that you strain your back doing um, the opposite of what I'm saying, people that rotate out, but you need to focus on coming down nice and controlled and keeping your bum in the seat. If you keep your bum in the seat, um, and if you can uh, go down okay anyway, just put your feet where they're comfortable. If not, try that technique of turning the actual leg out slightly, like I said. It will allow just a little bit more range of motion because it eases the hips. You want to go down to the point, the weight will literally stop itself. So if you push your bum in the seat, it will just, if you're coming down under control, it will literally, when you get to the bottom before you rotate, stop. And that's where you want to be. Before that rotation happens is where you, uh, that's where you want to get to the bottom and then come back up. Okay, so we'll get George on just to show um, what you can do to just turn out slightly and then that'll um, give it a try. And again, let us know what you think. It doesn't have to be on the leg press, it can be squats, etc. as well. George is just gonna do normal here. Okay, so put his feet where they're comfortable. Like I say, a little bit higher up there so you can go through your heels. Okay, push up. So really slow, pushing his bum in the seat, and then he goes back up. Now slightly rotating, so he's pushing his bum in the seat. Now George, as you can see, can get a great range of motion anywhere. But what he's going to do now is just going to turn his feet out slightly, and his actual leg out slightly, okay? And then as he comes down, it's just easier to get down. So don't turn your feet too, just have them comfortable, but just have to turn the leg slightly. Okay, so he's coming down and then he's driving back up and it just releases here a little bit and he can just push your bum in the seat, George. He can just get that little bit further down, okay? So he can get a great range of motion anywhere. So the difference is minimal there, but for some people, you will feel a huge difference in the release of them hips. So you can get that little bit further down. Again, give it a try. Let us know what you think. Okay guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a side lateral. Um, just a quick explanation on that because it's probably, 
if not the worst exercise performed in a gym, it's got to be right up there in the top two or three, that's for sure. So, um, people use way too much weight and they still do the old fashioned kind of pouring, pouring a pitcher, some people at the top, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just if it pulls you out of shape, which it can do, it's then not working the delt exactly where you want it. And also could in theory over time cause an injury. Okay. Um, I tend to do these in a, in, a, in a very certain way. So we'll get George to come in in a second and just show you exactly what that is. I don't want you tipping your thumbs down necessarily. Um, for some people, if it feels comfortable, you might get away with it. But um, try, the way that we do the movement almost takes care of itself. I also don't want you coming to the front. A lot of people come to the front. The problem with that is most people then get a little swing to get back. So you're using momentum for part of the movement. Um, it's not a bad place to be with them slightly in front because it can pull you over a little bit. And when you're slightly over, you can almost get that side delt better and, and probably safer than actually doing the uh, tip over of the, of the thumb down. Um, but the problem with it is when you do that, you tend to be over here and people tend to swing. So I prefer you to keep the dumbbells actually at your sides because you're already in that great position for side deltoid to start the movement and work it. So we'll get George in and I'll just show you exactly. Okay, so dumbbells at your sides, arms want to be completely straight, okay? Um, I've said before, you might feel forearms a little bit, but um, you will, it'll, it'll, will ease, will that. If it doesn't, then yes, put a slight bend in the arm, but it wants to be the slightest bend you can possibly get. Because the further we take that dumbbell away, the more on the deltoid it's gonna be. So, what you're gonna do is, rather than tipping, if he's starting from the side there, George is gonna more focus on pushing the elbow, uh, pushing the dumbbell away from himself. So he's gonna come up and push away. Now, as you can see, when he does that, the hand stays nice and flat anyway, it's on the delt, he's not rotated over so he's hurting the shoulder and then as he comes down he's going to push away all the time. So literally think of pushing the dumbbells to either wall away from you, keeping his body nice and straight and then he's doing that as he's coming down. Wrists nice and straight, try to focus mentally that you're lifting from the elbow. What I mean by that is think of the elbow being higher than the hand. Now as you can see with George it isn't necessarily so but it's in line. Most people bend and then the dumbbell is higher, which is not good, okay? You're taking the stress off the deltoid. So traps are down, he's pushing away, so looking down. So the hand position is not changing. He's just coming directly out to the side, not forward or back, and he's pushing to either wall. Okay, just stop for a second, George. Now, the final point I wanna make on this is what I tend to do with people is, you can do them seated exactly the same. Cables, you want a full range of motion. Now with dumbbells, a lot of people struggle, sorry I'm getting whacked in the head with something here. Um, the thing with dumbbells is sometimes what happens is um, you go from say a five kilo weight um, to even a six kilo and it, you really struggle with the form um, because it's such a small muscle group that we're trying to actually target there. So what I suggest you do then is if say fives became light um, but you're struggling to go up to the next weight, if you watch George again, so he's smoothly going to push out hold as he should and then he's slowly going to come down, mimicking on the way up exactly the same, but then he's going to stop at three quarter point, so he's going to come down, then he's going to go back up and squeeze there, come down, just try to come down where I am George, so it's just before you feel the tension release, then he's going to go back up. That really puts more stress on the deltoid, so you can try that, that allows you then to stay with the same weight but making it much more intense and then obviously you can go to the bigger weights later on and then do that again and work your way through like that. So that's a proper side lateral guys, okay? Keep the body nice and straight and isolate, get your brain in those muscles and give it a go, let us know what you think.